reason they want secrecy is because they're doing evil. Evil is done under the cover of darkness. Good works are done in the sunshine. Right Haven is the company suing Hill. They represent the Denver Post newspaper, which originally took the photo. Right Haven sued over 30 people and entities for copyright infringement over this photo. In Hill's case, they didn't ask him to take the photo down before they sued. But I think there are two perspectives to it. Bill Briner is an attorney for Kilpatrick, Townsend, and Stockton. He says it's not clear-cut if Hill broke the law because the lines around copyrights are fuzzy. We asked if it's legal for Right Haven to sue without first simply asking Hill to take down the photo. That certainly is within their legal rights. Whether it's the right thing to do is, in some ways, a separate question. Briner says it's not uncommon for a company to sue first and ask later. In this case, Right Haven's MO appears to be sue and then hope the defendant will settle. In the end, it's all about it, it typically is, is about the money. I work real hard on it, even though my disability makes it hard for me. Mildly autistic and diabetic, Brian Hill's blog is his life. USWGO.com offers Brian's opinion on government issues, but it's now shut down, all thanks to this lawsuit, claiming Brian willfully used a picture without the copyright owner's permission. They tried to attack people who they know might not be able to afford an attorney or be able to defend themselves against uh, uh, like uh, high-ranking lawyers. Las Vegas-based law firm Wright Haven LLC targets unauthorized use of news content, and Brian's suit is one of 32 focused just on the use of a Denver Post picture showing an airport pat-down, a picture Brian claims he didn't know was copyright protected. They claim they're just trying to save this industry and help them add value to um, their operations. Wake Forest Law Professor Simone Rose says what the law firm is doing is legal. The problem, the 1976 Copyright Act, which doesn't make it clear with today's technology what's protected under fair use. What we need is a modification of the statute that allows the ordinary person to look at it or the ordinary person to read some material and figure out that I can definitely do this. For years now, copyright has been used as a censorship tool under the technicality of law. Even the Copyright Clause of the U.S. Constitution states that copyright should be used to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. Our founding fathers didn't believe in using copyright laws to censor freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, or to infringe upon your ability to petition the government for redress of grievances. Using copyright law as an excuse to censor political material would be a violation of the very First Amendment in the Bill of Rights under the U.S. Constitution. Unfortunately, the U.S. federal government and governments around the world are using copyrights as an excuse to seize the domains of sites suspected of piracy. Without a court trial, they have shut down certain YouTube accounts and other streaming video accounts, blacklisted other accounts. They sue bloggers for using excerpts from online newspaper articles, even censor critical political documentaries. E1 lied to the public claiming they had somehow owned the copyright to Alex Jones' documentary film Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, simply because Alex made contract deals with a distribution label that E1 had secret control over. Brian Hill of USWGO Alternative News is on record exposing E1's fraudulent copyright ownership claims. On YouTube, they started getting scared and they unblocked his documentary film America from the road to freedom to the streets of fascism that used excerpts of Al Jones material, hoping Mr. Hill would just shut up and go on with his life. Instead, Mr. Hill called in to the Alex Jones show to warn Alex about the E1 censorship attack against his own film production. Alex grants people permission to use his films incidentally. Unbelievable. Let's go to Brian in North Carolina, and then we'll go to Jeff and uh, Alaric and everybody else. Uh, Brian, you're on the air. Uh, hey, Gerald and Alex. I got a quick question for the both of you. Okay. Uh, what do you think about E1 Corporation's YouTube worldwide blockade of not just your 2007 documentary, In Game Blueprint for Global Enslavement, but they could censor the Obama deception 
which you and Gerald Fuente were both on. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's big calls for Internet censorship going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's one of our top trends, Big Brother Internet. Oh, no, look, they're gonna, I'm telling you, the bigger their screw-ups, the harder they clamp down on us. You know, what are you going to see? Maybe, you know, a wheelchair granny bomber, a Brazil bomber? They're going to make something up where they're going to start a war, and it'll be an excuse to clamp down more on our freedoms. How much more clamp down than you need than the National Defense Authorization Act? Well said. Uh, thank you so much, Brian. Good, good, good questions. Um, anything else? Uh, I sent it to your news tip email so you can look at all the screenshots of the censorship going on. All right, we'll look it up. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Alaric in Nebraska and then Jeff. After emails were sent to InfoWars, Alex Jones acknowledged that his film was being unreasonably censored, even though he, Alex Jones, is one who still owns and holds the copyrights to his productions. He went on record on his own YouTube channel, Talk Radio. And we've just got to proliferate our videos and our info. And uh, Aaron's saying we need to, you know, save all the shows on hard drives and, 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 and have them as an archive because with this Kazaa type software, they can delete my voice off the entire internet once it's all on cloud systems. I mean, it's already happened, and I've called the company and, and, and said, why with the end game? If anybody uploads 30 seconds to YouTube or other channels, it won't let them upload it. This is pre restraint. All because I went through a distributor that then signed it to a catalog of a Canadian company to try to put in game in stores. I hold the copyright. It's in my contract that I can give it out free on the internet. And, th and, and you notice they left a few channels they think are mine up. But everywhere else, you can't put 30 seconds of Endgame now on the web. They can hit one button, and it'll start like a virus erasing my voice forever. Your voice. This is what their cloud system, their centralized Internet 2 is all about. So you start page, use other proxy uh, systems. Stop using the globalist operation. Independent researcher from Jeepers Media, Mike Mozart, revealed the same people that want to use copyright crackdowns to control the internet are the same ones that wanted people to commit copyright infringement in order to create that many, or what many, would call a huge problem. As the elites love to use this problem reaction solution method, they would use their new copyright powers to censor the truth, then look like heroes. They're going to use this to take over the internet and shut down sites like YouTube and Twitter and all your favorites so they can control it so you have to watch their lame-ass worthless TV shows. But you know what? I've got the secret to stopping it and you're going to help me do it, right? Now don't disappoint me, you got to do your part. Because once the lawmakers find out about this, I think they're going to stop that law. But if you're listening to those hearings, you know it's all about online piracy. Like downloading movies and TV shows and stuff like that. But who do you think... But, but come here, but come here. Who do you think really caused all that piracy, huh? Was it all these kids? No. They needed the tools to do it. Who distributed those tools? Guess who? CBS Television? The Cena division of CBS had almost the exclusive distribution of things like LimeWire, Kazaa, Morpheus, BitTorrent, Azurius, Vuz. CNET, Download.com, and ZDNet are divisions of CBS Interactive which is owned by CBS Viacom. CNET distributed these little widgets that you would click on on those sites. CNET would host the software on their own servers after they've tested it for effectiveness, after their editors approved all the copy and all the pictures, after they tested it thoroughly to make sure it worked perfectly. Then they'd allow it on their site and they'd give people this widget because the more downloads that appear on CNET's charts. Because at one time, CNET was a very popular site, and they wanted to be on those charts, so people would say, ooh, the most popular download of the day, I want to be there. Right now you're saying, hey, a lot of other sites had that software besides CNET. Oh, yeah, they did. It was co-branded with CNET. That's right. They made deals where they would distribute their content on sites like AOL, MSNBC, ESPN, Disney's Go.com. Hey, now it's time to wake up. These SOPA supporters, most of them distributed the file sharing software and taught people how to use it. But before I go on, I have to explain something. File sharing software is perfectly legal. However, under the MGM versus Grokster US Supreme Court ruling, they held that one who distributes a device 
you know, the file sharing software, with the object of promoting its use to infringe copyright, as shown by clear expression or other affirmative steps taken to foster infringement, is liable for the resulting acts of infringement by third parties. This is regardless of the device's non-infringing uses. In other words, you can distribute it, but you can't encourage anyone to use it to infringe copyright. And do you know what? CNET and CBS did just that thousands of times. Hey, you SOPA-supporting music rights groups, listen up to this. Now, here's one of those ESPN Disney CNET co-branded pages. And what do we see here? One of the MP3 Insider file-sharing smackdown tests, something they commonly did uh, for quite a few years. Why did they use Britney Spears and Beatles and known artists? Disney, you put it on your ESPN site for the better part of a decade? Encouraging people to download and copy? Copyrighted materials? Why did you do it, Disney? Why? It doesn't make any sense. But why would Disney even have their own branded piracy software? Branded for Go.com, one of their portals. That's right, the Walt Disney Company that's plowing millions into getting SOPA passed has a ghost of file sharing passed. Their own branded file sharing service to get free MP3s branded the Go Network. And they use Scour as one of their search engines. And what do you know? They were suing Scour at the exact same freaking time. They were suing it and using it to help people procure songs. Disney, I thought you supported SOPA. That's right, guys. Disney's one of the key supporters of SOPA and enjoyed a decade-long distribution deal with CNET for all those downloads. Another one of the key supporters of SOPA, Warner. The Warner Corporation distributed this software through their AOL portal for years and made a bundle doing it. They distributed Kazaa, for God's sakes, BitTorrent. They did them all. AOL? Oh, no, you didn't, AOL, because you were part of Time Warner. They're leading the charge for SOPA. And did you know that the co-founder of CNET, Shelby Bonney, was actually on the board of directors and the chairman of the board of CNET and on the board of directors of Warner Music Group at the same time, distributing all this file sharing software while Warner was actually distributing this material through their AOL portal. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Why would they do that? Why would... All of the entertainment companies that seem distribute all this software and encourage people to use it to infringe copyrights when no one else was really distributing this software. And AT&T Broadband Online was in partnership with Comcast. What did they distribute? No, not Kazaa. Yep, that's right. They offered all the co-branded software downloads of CNET, including Kazaa. 281 million downloads. And don't forget that CNET had their own built-in search engine. That's right, it was used for finding mp3s and to make it even easier you didn't even have to leave cnet site nope 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 they actually help you out by suggesting people like the beatles or beck's loser song that's right cbs cnet's search.com offered the easiest way to find free mp3s this is not the first time the copyrights have been used to censor the facts and truth bright haven llc attempted to force alex jones to keep quiet using vicious settlement agreements they attempted to get my lawyer to encourage me to sign a similar agreement. My lawyer found out that the settlement agreement would not only take away my freedom of speech, but would also create a fabricated press release that forced me to request every news outlet to take out every comment I ever made to the press about Right Haven. Right Haven LCC was a proxy company that sued bloggers and even a reporter for copyright infringement over newspaper material and photos. The real objective? The evisceration of the rising alternative media a media that was putting newspapers and newspaper business out of business because people don't trust the newspaper anymore. People don't trust corporate media. They don't trust the fact that it's being controlled and they're pushing for a new world order of global governance and a big brother nanny state that tells you what to think, what to say, what to do, what to eat, what to hear, what to feel, what to think. It is a big idea, a new world order where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future. Fortunately, Right Haven LLC has fallen thanks to fair use victories and good judges that understood what copyright truly was about. Judges 
that have protected the Bill of Rights as well. So their plan to end the alternative media has failed. For this, we can be thankful. Even MPAA head, former senator, stated he wanted the internet to become like a great firewall of China for censorship and Big Brother reign free. If many of you are wondering why lawyers, the copyright office, and Hollywood folk would get behind this legislation to censor the internet, even listen to former Senator Chris Dodd, now the head of the MPAA, who last week explained to Variety that the lobby is only asking for the same kind of power to censor the internet as the government has in the People's Republic of China. All this is happening because the elites that were once arrogant and knew that their plan for a new world order was unstoppable are now always met with resistance. This is why Hillary Clinton stated on the record that we are in an information war. The elites are now scared of losing their battle with the power of the alternative media. They know that truth and knowledge is their bane. We are engaged in an information war. We, we are in an information war, and we are losing that war. I'll be very blunt in my assessment. The Copyright Office is now nothing more than an extortion ring, racketeering operation that protects only those that can afford to pay its racketeering fees. Those who cannot pay the fees of the Copyright Office and cannot afford a copyright attorney risk, copyright infringement, lawsuits, copyright theft, theft and fraud, bullying under the color of law, if that is not extortion, racketeering in violation of the RICO statutes, then I don't know what is. This is why USWGO always releases into the public domain any work they solely create. We don't wish to financially support or aid the extortion racket corporation that the Copyright Office has become. When Craig F. Walker, a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer for the Denver Post, admitted in an email that he doesn't even own the photographs that he took, you get a whole new perspective on how people are forced to serve their corporations that sue the various bloggers for copyright infringement. In fact, many intellectual property lawyers will likely hate this video because they get their whole livelihoods from copyright infringement court cases, similar to how many doctors get their livelihood off of people suffering an illness. You gotta wonder if it's worth it to make a living off oppression and suffering from someone else's loss. I think it is time to become what we used to be, and that is a free republic instead of this vicious, fascist, dictatorial, controlled police state that America is today. Welcome to America with a K. Instead of making a living off the suffrage of humanity, we should be making a living off the benefit and the greater development of humanity for the benefit of all mankind.